a regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission, Florence, Arizona. The time is 6 p.m. Mr. Harmon, will you take the roll? I will, sir. And Mr. Chairman, if you turn your volume up just a little bit more. Uh, it's because uh, I'm not sitting You sound more authoritative enough. the louder you are. Um, authoritative, yeah. Okay. That's exactly Commissioner Prow. Is that, that guy to, uh, <laughs> Okay, Commissioner Simmons. Present. Commissioner Smith. Present. Vice Chair Frost. Present. Chairman Pronzo. Present. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, sir. And I pledge of allegiance, I will say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, moving right along. Discussion, approval, disapproval of the minutes at a regular meeting conducted on October 1st, 2020. Has it really been a whole month? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. Mr. Pro, you're breaking up. Oh, sorry. No, I, uh, nothing to say really. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, all right, well then, uh, any comments, uh, changes to the minutes? I don't hear anything. Can I have a motion? I'll make the Chairman. motion. Through the Wait a minute, oh. you're competing. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Chairman, I'll make the motion that we uh, approve the minutes. Do I have I'll a second? second? I'll second. All right, so we have a motion by Commissioner Pro, second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those are the, all those opposed? Motion carried. Okay, new business. This is a presentation for approval or disapproval of the design review application PZ2027 by LG, LGI Homes for new home elevations for lots in Sunrise Estates too. Who gets to give the presentation? I will start with a short introduction and then I will turn it over to the representatives from LGI. Great, Mrs. Benitez. Sunrise Estates 2 is located just southeast of the intersection at 16th Street in South Centennial Park. Sunrise Estates is broken up into two parts. You have the Sunrise Estates 1 and Sunrise Estates 2. The first Sunrise Estates was completed around 2005, and the second Sunrise Estates was started with two, how, two model homes, but it was never fully completed. Those model homes were moved into by residents from Florence. LGI has come and they have a plan to change the lots. They have a final plat in the works right now and it'll change from 89 lots that are there right now down to 83 lots to make way for retention for water and storm drainage. LGI has different elevations to show to the commission tonight and they have based these elevations on the designs and architecture that is already in Sunrise Estates 1. I will now hand our before I hand it over, our staff recommendation is that the request is in compliance with town development code and keeps in with the character that is already present in the community. I will now turn it over to LGI's representative, Angela Hicks. And we also have rep Rob Huntley is here as well. You guys can decide which one who is presenting. Ms. Hicks, you have the podium. Actually, we're going to give it over to Rob Huntley. He's going to speak for us today. Mr. Huntley. How are you? How is everyone um, this evening? Good. Very good. Very well. Okay. Um, we are excited to come into the city of Florence. You know, we are a, uh, we're a 10th largest home builder in the nation right now. And um, we're looking to expand markets greatly. Currently, we're building in 18 different states, 34 different markets with 110 active communities as of date right now. We're looking to expand our markets into two other states, 
along with about uh, another 15 to 30 active communities across the nation. Uh, we were founded in uh, 2003 in Conroe, Texas. Uh, little, little Conroe, Texas, where we started our first community, Somerset Estates. Uh, we closed and delivered 337 homes in a matter just under two years. So if you guys are familiar with uh, uh, Casa Grande, Ghost Hollow Estates, we just came into that market uh, roughly about uh, nine months ago, 10 months ago, and uh, we have officially sold 125 lots and we will close all 125 homes in under a year in Casa Grande right now. So we are very excited to uh, bring our product into Florence and we feel we have a, a great opportunity to uh, one, give back to the community and two, uh, perform, you know, provide first time home buyers uh, great affordable price quality that uh, you know everyone deserves so very good um, is there more presentation more presentation uh, do you, Angela do you have uh, anything that do you get Marcella do you have what was provided would yeah. you like uh, to talk about your elevations sure so we are um, we're gonna you can have, have Sean bring him up if you want That'd be great. Yeah, okay. I have the PowerPoint here. Let me share my screen. While he's doing that, Mr. Chairman, I uh, just wanted to add, um, I actually worked with uh, LGI Homes when they first broke into the Arizona market uh, on the Buckeye Project. Hi, Rod. <laughs> How are you? I think, what was it, Blue, Hor Blue Horizons? Blue Hills. Blue Hills. Yep. Um, and I, I will say this for LGI. It is as far as identifying the types of project, what we found in Buckeye, and I think has been uh, strengthened in this product that they're showing you tonight, is it, it, people consider them to a certain degree an entry level home, but it comes into the market with what a lot of places would offer as upgrades. Correct. They come in with a very solid structure, um, and they provide things, amenities with the base model that in other communities you would actually pay for as an upgrade or an extra to the home. And I think that's pretty significant for not only them, but for our market. And hopefully that's one of the things you'll cover tonight, Rod or Angela. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, we, uh, uh, we're gonna offer, um, you know, four separate floor plans, you know, ranging from 1200 to uh, 2200 square foot. Uh, we build an information center um, you know, most builders, we're not like most builders. We don't build models, right? So we're going to build an information center, which is our Savannah plan. And, um, and uh, that serves as a office that houses uh, two to five experienced, very well intelligent sales agents. We're open uh, 369, uh, 356 days a year, okay? And uh, we, our office is open from 8.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. So if you, we've, we've got clients that are looking for homes, we have people that are on our sites ready to go. So we are 100% spec builder, like Larry said, right? But we include all the upgrades. And, um, you know, you got your vinyl flooring, you've got granite countertops, you have full appliance packages, um, you know, front yard landscape packages. You know, we're going to build all elevation A's in this community to match uh, the similar demographics on the two homes that are in that product and the existing uh, Sunrise Estates community. Um, but we are, you know, we're essentially, like I said, a, a spec builder. So we have 30 day move in ready inventory homes, right? So the day that that client walks into our office and wants to purchase a home, um, we take them out to the community. So we're not showing models, we're showing the homes that they're looking to buy, what they're approved to buy. And so when we take them to a inventory completed home that we have, you know, our objective is to get the sale right there. So they know exactly what they're moving into. They see the product, they see the completed home. 30 days later, we do a buyer orientation and we, we close on that home. So uh, we have had great success with this, uh, this model across the nation. And, uh, you know, like I said, at Casa Grande, it is expanding extremely well. And I have no doubt that uh, we wouldn't, we are not going to do the same thing in the city of Florence. And uh, we're extremely excited to, uh, you know, get the opportunity to come in and uh, give back to the community. So, you know, L like, again, like I said, LGI Homes is different than most community or most home builders. 
Uh, we pride ourselves on the quality. And one, you know, we expect that, you know, we're going to give that quality back to our, our homeowners. And that, you know, that in turn refers, you know, turns into referrals for our existence of our building. And, um, you know, we, uh, like I said, we're going to build four different elevations. Uh, we got one info center. So our Taos will be the smallest home. Our Benson is going to be that next floor plan up our Parker and then our largest home would be the Snowflake, which we're looking at right now. Um, it is our two story. It is our, it's, I believe it's a five bedroom. If, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Angela, I don't have the plans in front of me guys, sorry. Um, but yes, we, uh, we give that diversity back to the homeowners. We, have, we offer 15 different color schemes. So we're never gonna build the same plan, same color, same elevation next to one another or you know, based on, um, you know, municipality, it's, I think it's every third house, we're gonna, you know, differential. So, um, you know, we have, we have mastered this concept across the valley and, uh, you know, Larry can testify to that, that park, we've come a long way from our uh, Blue Hills community and we've definitely, uh, you know, we talked about the upgrades that we're offering. Like I said, it's, it's full granite, full granite in the kitchen, full granite in the bathroom, undermount sinks, uh, vinyl flooring in all the wet areas throughout the kitchen, in the dining room, the carpet. You know, we include the standard two cable outlets, the phone, a USB port in the kitchen with an outlet on it. Um, like I said, appliance packages, front yard landscape packages. Um, yeah. Okay. Larry, is this under a PUD? Uh, no, it is not. It was um, done originally as just a stock subdivision. Um, and for, I guess, when the market crashed in the mid to late 2000s, uh, the original builder developer um, pulled out of it, just walked away from it, basically. Infrastructure is already in the ground. It does have to be um, tested, and there may, there may be some tweaking to it or upgrades. I know there's some issues with the pavement. Uh, just like any other type of infrastructure, it deteriorates faster if it's not used. And that's what occurred out there, but that's all being worked out with engineering right now. Uh, okay. And um, I think, Rod, you're pretty close to finalizing all of that with uh, Mr. Salas at this point, as I understand. Correct. Yes, we do have a, a, a worked out game plan. Uh, I believe there's some sewer improvements. We're under the testing right now, so we're going to finalize all that. I believe we do have a, a, a pavement seal that's going to be scheduled. You know, obviously, all this stuff is going to get uh, taken care of before we get you know, rocking and rolling on any production before approval and all that good stuff. So um, I don't have the details from our land development department right now in front of me, but I do know there is a punch list that we are currently working on. And, right. you know, it'll be ready to go before we get going on production and moving homeowners in, you know. Um, the other thing about LGI Homes, guys, and I just want to uh, point this out, is that we're a, we're a set builder, right? So we build in, build in sets of two or of three, four, and five. When we say set build, we actually line build, right? So our, our objective, which, um, you know, is a, a benefit for our homeowners is we work from the in, inside the community out so that we never, you know, our objective is never have any construction traffic in front of our, our homeowners, you know, so they're going to have access in, we're going to come in the opposite way so that we're never have, you know, forklifts, concrete trucks, you know, in front of our clients after they close on the house. So when I say set building, you know, we normally release homes in sets, you know, we're going to do maybe uh, a set of nine to 12 a month, which we're going to be, when the first set completes in that month, we're going to be to the stage in that second set where it's past all the big heavy equipment and so forth as we proceed every month, month to month to month. Okay. Um, you know, and again, like I said, we are uh, very proficient in our sales operations. Uh, normally, we do what's called a grand opening, where we have a big event out there, invite the community, invite the, the council members out there to come and watch this event. Um, obviously, the COVID situation has kind of put a hindrance on those things, um, but we, we do what's called soft grand, grand openings. And our first grand opening, you know, in Casa Grande, I'm using, for example, was the first time it was kind of hindered with the COVID you know, we still sold 15 houses in the first, on a Saturday and Sunday. So we had clients ready to go. We had the opportunity to go in there, 
you know, and get those homes started so that when we're completing those homes, we're not hindering those homeowners once they move in. Great. Can I ask a question, please, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, please. I, I was just going to say, let's turn it over to the commission so that oh. they can ask questions. Well, I, uh, I'm just looking at the, um, uh, the presentation here and, and I'm confused by uh, the description that he gave for the four models based on what's in the the plan it says acacia, ironwood, mesquite, and Palo Verde. And uh, the landscape. Uh, are they pardon? The landscape plan? No, well, I think it, he's talking about the project narrative. Okay. Uh, oh, it said the plan breakdown and center model. So I, I don't know. I was confused by how he described um, the plan. Yeah. What's okay. here? I'll, I'll jump in there, guys. So we, uh, uh, it sounds like we didn't get that revised narrative over to Marcella right away. Uh, those were going to be the initial plans that we brought in. And then once we uh, did our, uh, you know, we, we got the lot fits and everything, we had to reevaluate our system. So uh, the plan names that are in the actual presentation where you're looking at the floor plans, those are the correct ones. Uh, we can get that revised narrative over to you. Angela, could we get that this evening if possible or first thing tomorrow? Yes. With the correct plan names in there. Yeah, and the names are correct on the uh, colored elevation and also on the PowerPoint. It's on the second page. I'm not sure, Marcel, if that um, ended up being part of this presentation. Um, it's on the second, I'm looking at it right now. It's on the second page, uh, giving the breakdown of the names, the livable square footage, the width, the depth, garages, um, all that information. If that's needed, it's in the PowerPoint. Okay, I yep, that one there. Yep. So if you pull to the second page. Yeah, so that will say the floor plans, the square footage. Uh, oh, okay. The count the bathroom count. And then this actually, I know we were talking about exteriors, but this actually shows the interiors of what we're providing. Like Rob had mentioned, the appliances, the granite, the cabinets. That shows all of the um, what we would consider upgrades. Can we go back to that last slide? We're moving too fast. Okay, Let, we need a moment of clarity here. Yes, sir. The package I have calls out an Arca Arcacia, Ironwood, Mesquite, and Palo Verde, and I uh -huh. see Tiles, Benson, Parker, Snowflake. Which one is the right one? It is this one here we're looking at. Like I said, that narrative that we sent over, we uh, apparently we missed sending the revised one with these plan names on there. But it is okay. the Benson, the Parker, and the Snowflake. Okay. All right. And what I see is that the revised plan, the square footage has come down a little bit. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And that's because of the lot size? Yes, sir. Okay. My uh, all right. I'm I, I'm sorry, Mr. Pearl. I I jumped in on you, but I was getting confused. Oh I no! Apologize. I, no, 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 no worries. No apologies. I I was. I mean, I was initially confused how he was describing it, and the square footage is smaller than what's described here. So okay. So he's he's um he's answered that question. Good. You might, you might note, Mr. Chairman, though, in your packet. The actual elevations that are provided are the ones that do tie to the PowerPoint that's on your screen. Oh, okay. So that part of it is still cohesive. All right. Okay, any other questions, comments from the commissioners? Would you like them to go through the rest of their presentation, Mr. Chairman? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought they did. I apologize, please finish. Yeah, if you guys can, I, I don't have access to scroll down through this, this packet here that you guys have. You know, again, Angela touched on the fact that all of our upgrades are included, which you just saw on the, uh, the next page there. Um, you know, our appliance packages here, Whirlpool. Um, you know, obviously right now, guys, I'm going to, uh, I'll be honest, Whirlpool is struggling very mightily with getting appliances out on time with the correct ones. So we've been 
installing upgrades as we need, whatever, you know, appliance packages come in, you know, so we're, uh, again, we're, we include all these in our packages. Every homeowner gets a, a, a refrigerator, dishwasher, range, microwave, all the bath accessories that are included in the house. Uh, they're all chrome finished. So an undermount sink, upgraded cabinets, upgraded carpet, and a luxury vinyl plank, granite countertops in all the kitchen, all the bathrooms with undermount kit or undermount sinks. So our door finish have, you know, the elevation A, it's going to be the Roman smooth two panel doors that we install with that same kind of feature on the exterior panel doors. Our interior hardware package, all stainless steel quick set. We have a, uh, um, yeah, quick set package throughout. We are sole sourced with quick set lifetime warranty with LGI. They do every home across the nation for us. We're finished. Yep. Hinges. Our electrical outlets, you can see, uh, we discussed how, you know, we're all, we're doing the tamper resistant updated 2018 code, which everything is on. Uh, this feature on the right, this is our, uh, our outlet that we put in the kitchen, you know, and uh, we talked about, uh, Larry talked about how, you know, builders charge upgrade for this. We include this, you know, so I'll, I'll just use Meritage, for example, they charge $150 to in install one of these. We include one of these in the kitchen right next to the phone outlet that we do in every house we build. You have phone outlets? We get one standard phone. Not many people use those anymore, you know? So we have, we have the cable and one phone outlet. You'd be surprised how many people ask where my phone outlet is. So I, I guess there still is people out there that use that house phone. But so we also okay. have Stiegel LED flush mount light fixture. Um, these have, you know, come with a, uh, a, a limited lifetime warranty and a 10 year warranty on the bulbs themselves. Uh, great feature to have low heat energy efficient. They don't put off any, any heat. Um, and then obviously our standard, uh, smoke alarms that we put in every house. Our uh, exterior light fixtures, the garage, um, that we provide as a standard. We also install a ceiling fan in the family room that is included. So again, going to another builder, guys, this is an upgrade that we would sell. This is included in an LGI home. Our Moen fixtures, again, we have a sole source contract with Moen that they do all of our fixtures across the nation, come with a lifetime warranty. And this is uh, you know, obviously represented when we sell this home to our buyers that you know, every fixture that we sell in here for your plumbing is comes with a lifetime warranty. If anything happens, we gladly go back and replace it. Our garage door elevations, uh, 16 panel standard door. We include a garage door opener on every LGI home. Again, this is an upgrade going to a buyer, uh, but they get the Slift Master quick, uh, quick drive, um, unit with the two remotes that is provided at uh, the day of closing with their keys when they move into their house. And then uh, the Wi-Fi Honeywell thermostat and the zone temperature uh, plan specific. Now, obviously these zones are broken up when we do the, our, our Chaz Roberts engineer design. Uh, you know, some houses may have more than one thermostat, but we always include the uh, temperature gauge in those off rooms to ensure that we're getting proper airflow. Um, every house, it comes with a uh, Energy Star certified fan that we put into the laundry room. Obviously, that's part of our Clean Air Act, clean air act system that we install in every, uh, every home as well. And then our uh, bath fixtures, um, you know, a pedestal sink in the secondary bathrooms are, you know, our master fiberglass tub shower combos. Uh, we got a Braxton 40-gallon water heater our elongated toilets that we install, elongated toilets. A lot of builders don't put those elongated ones in as well. So those are included with LGI Home. And then uh, another thing we do is that uh, the last thing you want is homeowners moving into a community and they're putting tinfoil over the window or hanging a, uh, a blanket or a sheet or putting newspaper up in that window. So every front facing window to the community, we include a blind on there so that they have that privacy the day they move into their house. 
That is it for that one. Hey, thank you, Sean. The presentation? Yeah. Okay, then I will turn it over to the commission. Um, Gentlemen. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, what, uh, what, is the, what are the price uh, range? What, how are they offering this price-wise? Um, well, I will, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take our current market where we're at in Casa Grande. You know, I think our most affordable house, what would be the Taos out there in Florence, I would say we probably start at that, uh, 219 range. Um, you know, I, I don't have the market analysis yet or those financial demographics back from our corporate office, but I would say that's probably where we're going to start 219 to 250 around there. Would you, had you considered using tankless water heaters instead of the uh, old fashioned technology? You know, we've, uh, we've gone back and forth to that. And uh, in fact, Angela can touch on that because her husband is a plumber, you know, so we've, uh, we've kicked that idea around quite a bit. Um, you know, actually we've, uh, we've done some research and we found that the maintenance on the tankless is actually probably a lot more difficult for our first time home buyers or those people that are looking to get into that home for the first time. We feel that, uh, you know, just, just off our research so far, but we have kicked it around. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I, I like my tankless water here. I've been yeah. here. It's, uh, it's okay. you know, once or twice about every year. Or so you do a little, you know, um, maintenance on it, uh, drain it, you know, pump the right. vinegar, but uh, we're, I mean, it's really, it's hot water on demand, so. Yeah, well, Angela, we will have to, uh, you know, maybe put that in our uh, our bid going forward and see what we can come with, up with. Will do. Okay. Mr. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Frost. Um, I, I just want to uh, compliment LGI a lot of the first time homeowner buyer builders now are putting in homes without eaves on them. And I think they look tacky. So I appreciate right, guys, I got to grab my cord for my self my laptop. Right. I appreciate them coming in with a, a model that has the eaves. I think it, it looks, looks much, much better. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Mr. Mr. Hunt, Mr. Huntley. Yes, sir. Um, I'm curious. Um, what attracted you to Florence? Mm, good question. That is a great question. You know, um, again, being a well-established town, and as you drive through, I mean, the, the area is great. The area is great. I mean, prisons that you, you know, the many prisons, right? So you have the people, you have the demographic, and, you know, it's, it fits our LGI client. That, and that's what we we go after. So, you know, I'll I'll do a, you know, LGI again. LGI is different. We kind of do a demographic before we go into a community or to a new area of town. We do what's called a market analysis, right? So we go in, we send our marketing team, and uh, they determine the amount of renters that we have in a you know a thirty mile radius of where this community might be, and. Huh. You know, obviously we pride ourselves on home ownership. We pride ourselves on, you know, getting that buyer that, you know, may be unable to get a home that we go in there and we offer affordable quality home with all the upgrades included. That What made you think that buyer was here? Well, again, I, I'm not on the marketing side. So, you know, before it, before it comes to uh, the construction side of things and Angela, you know, we have, like I said, our marketing team and our land acquisition team, uh, they go out and they find land. They find areas that may fit that demographic and fit us as a company, right. um, you know, so, but again, you know, I'm, I, I live out in Surprise, guys. So I drive to, to Tucson and Casa Grande and Florence and you know, uh, Rancho Mirage on a daily basis. And I'll, I'll be honest, the, the town is beautiful. I like it down there. It's a great area. It's well established. And uh, it, it just fits fits what we want to offer to the community because I think it would be a benefit to the community. Yes, well, density is a problem for us. And 
I apologize for trying to pick your brain, but we're going through a redevelopment process uh -huh. right now. And so knowing what drives the builder to Florence um, helps a lot. I'm, I'm interested to know whether it was the truck factory that's built in, being built in Coolidge that's going to bring more people into the area. It's those yeah. kind of things that I'm very, very interested in. Right. And we could find that out too, Rob, because uh, like Rob had said, the marketing team does get um, uh, replies back. So when they send out that analysis and they go and hunt for people, they get so many phone calls back saying that they're interested and that's what judges them to end up buying that project. So I'm assuming that that's definitely what had happened is that we knew that if we had that many lots and how many phone calls came in, that we knew we'd get a good turnout. And I would just like to say for myself, um, uh, I told Maricela and, and Larry, I am a native from Casa Grande and I actually got married in Florence uh. because I did love uh, the town and I love the, like when I went and seen them, I'm driving through the town. I love how it has that old feel. I got married at the winery. Um, it's just a beautiful town. And so, of course, I was pushing LGI to not only do Casa Grande, where I was born and raised, but of course, I spent a lot of time in Florence, too. I don't well, know if that made a difference, but I love <laughs> Florence. <laughs> well, I, I hope Harold and Katie were listening because we just advertised the winery. Well, but I even <laughs> told our division president after I left, I took a photo from... Um, you know, our, the community um, from Sunrise and there were uh, two home builders. So I was talking to them and I took a photo because the winery is just like right in the background. And uh -huh. uh, our division president said, well, we definitely need to put that into our marketing and uh, our tours. Cause we of course take the buyers on tours. So I'm like, you have to, it's beautiful. Well, go close, close your deals at the winery. Yeah. And we, that's what he had said. Right. And I said, they have wine. They probably serve right now. I said, we should close the deals there. Why not? That's yeah. right. <laughs> well, I, I want to add one more thing, guys, if I can, about LGI Homes. So um, every July, you know, from our CEO to little old office manager who sits out in, you know, Buckeye, Arizona, we actually shut down for the day. And this is a... a countrywide thing that we do. We shut down the office for one business day of the year. And our objective at LGI, every community goes out and gives back to the community. So we, uh, you know, we go to, uh, you know, uh, maybe some food banks or uh, schools that might need some benches or something painted. We, we find that, op, you know, that obligation to show our loyalty to the community. So you guys will get to experience that. And I, you know, I would personally, myself and Angela will probably come to each and every one of you and say, hey, where can we help out? Where can we give back for the day? And uh, you'll have every person who works in our, you know, Florence division is gonna go back and, you know, do something for the community. So that's Great. just a little food for thought, guys. Great. Chairman, uh, but also if I could just add to that, the other thing that's been occurring just in the market in general is that um, more and more people or developers are looking at the core area of Florence. You know, we have oh, about a, more than a thousand lots platted just south of this particular development. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been platted for many years. There's yeah, no infrastructure in the ground yet or anything like that, but they are legal lots. And we've had meetings as recently as this morning uh, where one developer, you know, large type, you know, uh, um, you know, the property developer type, not the builder, home builder themselves, looking at a 90, well, round numbers, 100 acre track. Oh, wow. And half of it is already platted and, and ready to go. And they're looking at uh, starting on the engineering and infrastructure plans to, to plat the other half of it and start building the whole thing out. And we'd be happy to hook LGI up with them. <laughs> Absolutely, Larry. If uh, if I, I I'll reach out to you later. Commercial announcement. Uh, but we have there's several developments down, the, you know, on Adamsville Road to Highway 287 that have been platted back in the 03s, 04s, 05s, and nothing really ever came of them. So there's an opportunity that's already been laid out in the community that people like LGI are searching out and finding. Mm -hmm. 
just okay. like Way Journey found the remaining lots on the north side in Villa Adelaida. And they're right. now building those out right now. Okay. Well, are, there my, any, uh, are there any other comments or questions from the commissioners? Um, Mr. President, just a couple. Please. Uh, the hinges, the kitchen cabinet hinges, uh, are those going to be the, the soft close hinges or standard? Standard hinges, sir. Standard hinges. Yes, sir. And the, uh, the blinds you're talking about, are they the cordless or the, the, or the, uh, the draw cord? They're the cordless. Cordless. Yep. Okay. And I also would like to, like to express my appreciation to LGI coming in. I've worked in the prison system for 33 years, uh, and there's a lot of turnover. Uh, we have people driving from Tucson and, and uh, sometimes in North Mesa and even Buckeye coming down to work in the prisons. And when you ask, well, why do you, why do you live there? Why do you drive? It's just because there's nothing in Florence. They, you can't find any housing in Florence. And so I, I'm happy to see this new development coming in at this time. It's just, I think it'll, it'll help everybody here. Any other questions or comments? All right, then I'm going to ask for a motion. Can I make a comment? Please, sir. I just wanted to make uh, uh, LGI aware of our Make a Difference Day. You make know, a Difference Day. Yeah, we have a Make a Difference Day, and that's where uh, we get everybody in the community involved uh, in you know doing things to make a difference in the community. Sometimes it's it's you know, cleaning up the town and picking up trash, painting trash cans. Uh, I'm sure we can get you information. Marcella can probably send you some information on what date that is. That would be amazing, guys. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay, can I have a, if there's no other comments, may I have a motion? Mr. I'll Chairman. make the Mr. 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 Chairman. Chairman. Oh, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to for approval of design review application PZ-20-27 by LGI Homes for a new home elevations for lots in Sunrise Estates 2 with conditions noted in the staff report. I have I'll a second. second. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by vote Vice Chair Frost, second by Mr. Schmidt. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Congratulations. And okay. This is the part where most people run out the building door because they're done. <laughs> <laughs> we want to say thank you, guys. We, we're we really looking forward to being uh, coming in there and growing our LGI name in the uh, town of Florence, and we're looking for... Uh, to build many years there. So we will definitely be in touch as far as that uh, pre-platted land that you guys have. We'll get that over to our land acquisitions team right now, but uh, we're very excited. Great, and thank you. Just to uh, say one thing is that, of course, we're gonna be bidding out. Um, we're always um, in look, you know, we want to help out the community. So if there's any trades in Florence that would be interested in bidding for us, we are totally open for that. So um, I don't know how I would find that if, if I just call. I advertise. I have a list. Advertise. Um, if you're looking for, um, I'm always in favor of, of hiring local. Yes. Okay. And so um, if you're looking for local talent, subcontractors, things of that nature, advertise. And, okay. uh, or you can look at the register of contractors and see who is in the um Florence area yeah I was gonna pretty much google that and get a list and start making phone calls so yeah well the I'll other thing that. too is the the uh, prison shops yeah. oh they, yeah they do certain types of specialty work they've done projects for the town on our streetscape um you know they they built the front counter in our building down here okay that's it's a great idea. idea ACI Industries a yeah ACI Industries ACI okay. Industries. Okay. Okay. Moving right along. In the... Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you.
All right, moving You're right along. To stick around if you want to, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dinner's waiting, and I want to get want to get. Through. <laughs> I got I got to catch a football game tonight. My son's playing tonight. One of his oh. games got moved. So hey, good I'm, luck. I, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, presentation discussion of research done by the staff of home occupations. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Sure, whoever is. Uh, this, Lonnie. Yeah. Um, just, just a kind of an overarching question. What is the motivation on this right now? Well, that's what I was going to do as part of the introduction. Perfect. Thank um, you. Since I've been here, uh, we get business license requests on a regular basis for various types of home occupations. The vast majority of them are to operate a... Um, you know, a home office, you know, like somebody is, uh, has a contracting service or something or, you know, whatever, and they want to run the business out of their home, but they still need to get a business license. So we, you know, routinely approve them for a home office use only, not for storage of equipment or things of that nature. However, there are some types of um, uh, criteria tied to our definition of a home occupation that um, is a little bit more restrictive than other communities. So uh, based on some, some recent requests, um, and this is why um, Vice Mayor Anderson brought it up at a meeting previously, uh, for us just to go in and reevaluate our home occupation restrictions and our code and our development code. And so that, that was the impetus behind it. You know, we may, you may decide to recommend no changes, you know, but at least we want to go over it and just, you know, so that you have the opportunity to review what other communities are doing, what advantages it might present to the town of Florence if we did modify our code and expand the, the definition a little bit, things of that nature. So tonight, I just want to present you with some basics that are it, that uh, were based on research that uh, Maricela has done and kind of just do a little general discussion and we can glean from that you know, what way you might be leaning and then get into more detail at a subsequent meeting. There's no decisions tonight, anything like that. But basically the first page of the staff report in italics, that is our sole reference to home occupation in the development code. Um, basically if you can have it in any zoning class, any residential zone um, without a use permit or anything of that nature, but the biggest questions that came up are number of employees. Our code says that it has to be a, re a family member resident of the house. Other communities have, you know, have more latitude than that. And we'll get to each one of those individually. Um, no commodities to be sold. That's kind of universal, uh, but ju not generating extra vehicular traffic in a neighborhood. That is loosely interpreted even in Florence as well as other places. It's more like no extra perceivable traffic um, in an area where all of a sudden you have a client base that you have three or four clients in your home at one time and now you're starting to block up through your driveway on the street. It's a little bit unusual to have that parking out there generates complaints from the neighborhood. So that's kind of where those come from. Not to, you can't convert your garage uh, to use as a home occupation uh, the way our code is written. Uh, other communities do that differently. So that's kind of where this, that was the impetus behind reviewing this. Um, like I said in the staff report, there typically is for home office, a consulting service. Like um, you know, when I, between jobs, when I retired the first and second time, I did consulting out of my den in my home. And depending on the community, I would have to, because it was consulting, I didn't have to have a business license, but that's all it was doing out of that office. Um, and so it's not unusual for somebody to have some type of a home office. We've had numerous ones for online sales of um, product where the person at home is basically the middleman. They order from the supplier and it gets delivered directly to the purchaser. And they are strictly the, the, you know, the office management of, of the purchasing end. We have those a lot up in, um, uh, Florence Gardens, as a matter of fact, as well as out in Anthem. Um, uh, just more recently, that just people looking at, you know, can I cut hair? Can I have a salon in my house? 
we actually have one in, da, in, the, in the town core. Um, that's one of the things that helped trigger this also. Interestingly, um, that is kind of a controversial area. Um, there was, and it is since closed, there was a house here in near where town where um, development services is that was doing a uh, a pest control service out of their home and they were actually storing chemicals in a shed on the site. Well, that becomes a little bit more dangerous and much more controversial. There, you know, you have hazardous material issues and things of that nature. Those typically are not allowed. This one had been there for many years and was not questioned. They have since moved that out and um, you know we would not sign that off as a home occupation any further but it was something that did exist here and raises questions so um, if you look at the second page of the staff report the communities that we use as a sample um, some are within or many about half of them are already in uh, Pinal County uh, our uh, various sister cities of uh, Apache Junction Casa Grande Coolidge and Pinal County itself then we looked at uh, other models just to see who, what might be the most strict and interesting enough, enough weren't necessarily Scottsdale and Gilbert. I used put Buckeye in there because they went through the transition about 15 to 20 years ago that Florence is starting to go through right now as far as growth and being a target of new development. That's where I know Mr. Huntley from because he did the uh, Buckeye project was his first one in the state and I worked with him over on that one. Um, and then the city of Maricopa also, we looked at them. The research summary is below. Um, if you notice, some of these are split different ways, uh, application required. And I was surprised that, um, that there's a formal application process in five of the eight uh, communities that we, um, that we researched. Uh, and you know that's something that maybe we wanna consider. Allowed in single family only. That was interesting too, because um, that there were only two yes, six, no. What the six no means basically is that they were allowed in any residential zone. You could put it in an apartment. Uh, so is that a problem? Not necessarily, it just found it interesting. Ancillary to the dwelling to hundred percent. Yes, the, the purpose of the residential property is for developing dwelling unit. Um, so yes, it has to be ancillary. Um, may it be altered to accommodate the home occupation? Universal, no. In other words, you can't modify the inside of the house. You can't modify in some cases, even inside the garage or carport to add in a home occupation. The principal use and intent is for residential. Um, the next one, number five, that's kind of an interesting one. Allow one non-resident employee. That was split, even up. And uh, communities that I've worked in, they, they would allow one to come in from the outside. Um, you know, like a, maybe somebody's running a, an insurance or a bookkeeping CPA out of their house and they might have one partner that comes in and works out of the house with them. That's not unusual. Uh, more than one employee, not so much. Uh, because they, again, you're, you're automatically adding additional traffic to the neighborhood just by bringing in the employee. So having more than one, you know, and then you have potential clients starts to build on that ex, uh, extra, or extra traffic in the area. Outdoor signing, um, I, I would have said no across the board, but interesting, Apache Junction does allow a, a small four square foot sign um, on, the, uh, on the residence itself, uh, like in a window or, you know, attached to the wall side of the house, not necessarily freestanding out in the yard. Um, does it allow a sale exchange of commodities? Only uh, three of them uh, were yes, four, no. One didn't seem to address it anywhere in their regulation. Um, then you get into the size of the use itself. Uh, and can you use the carport and garage? Um, four yes, four no. Uh, the, the four yes, is there's a breakdown uh, we put in there. It ended up being 25% of the dwelling. That's universal. And even in the, in the no's, you could still use 25% of the dwelling. But in the yeses, you, it was an either or. You could use a, uh, an accessory building, you know, like a shed or, garage or a, a shop or something like that, or a portion of the garage. So that one was split. Um, clients allowed to enter the home. 
six yes, two did not address, but then there was criteria on the yeses, you know, so many a day, they set hours of operation, things of that nature. Um, on 11, outdoor equipment storage, universal, no. In other words, contractor can't use his backyard to store his, his excavating equipment. Like that's the simplest example. Um, does the uh, home occupation allow on-site client parking? Not commercial vehicles, but just a client. Again, like a CPA or a lawyer or something like that. Uh, yes. Uh, but again, there were certain criteria on the yeses. Um, you know, no more than so many at a time or uh, cannot reduce the required parking. Some communities actually require four parking places for a single family home. Two in the, in the garage slash carport, two in the driveway. And so you couldn't use those up, which, you know, if, if however you had an extra long driveway or something like that, you could park there or else it'd be on street parking. And then undefined, no inordinate vehicular traffic. Again, if it becomes obvious to the neighbors that there's extra traffic, then that maybe is too much. Uh, but somebody stopping by your house, uh, a good example, when I was in Prescott years ago, we had a, um, a individual who was running her Avon distribution out of her garage. And so once a month, there would be a large delivery truck show up, unload boxes and boxes. And then a couple of days later, the street was lined with cars with the Avon representatives all picking up their product that they had ordered for that month. And we actually had to get police intervention to close it down. I mean, if, they, if they're gonna run that kind of business, they need to get themselves a storage locker someplace and run it out of that or a storefront or something. But that, you know, it definitely is an example of inordinate traffic. Uh, typical, does it allow, you know, noise, dust, odors, vibration? Of course not. Uh, allow storage of flammables. Um, uh, I mistyped that, it's zero yes and should be eight no's. Nobody allows those. That's my error or, or in the report. Overnight accommodations, um, you know, can you have a client stay over type of thing? There were no yeses. Six of them didn't even, didn't even address it. Um, then there was, this was kind of interesting then. Is there a list of prohibited uses? Five of the eight do. Is there a list of permitted uses? Only two of them had permitted uses. So they were leaving it up to the discretion of the um, enforcement agency, the planning department or business license division or whoever it might be. Um, Larry, could I interrupt for a second? Sure, absolutely. I believe the county has a list of prohibited yes. uses as well. Yeah, and that's what we, and that's, they're one of, the, uh, one of the five that said, uh -huh. yes, they have a list. And those are noted below. Specifically allowed typical stuff, accountant, architect, artist, consultant, um, individual tutoring, uh, music. Indi I thought this was interesting. One of the lists has individual stringed instrument instruction. So you can't teach the trombone, I guess. Um, I think I can glean from that. Uh, but, or they thought that the stringed instrument was more melodic and that it, it wouldn't scare the birds. I don't know where that one came from. Um, and then preserving in minor home cooking is actually yes on a, or allowed on a couple of lists. You know, people who make jellies, jams, things like that, that they sell down at the craft fairs or at the farmer's market, you know, yeah. low production stuff, they were allowed. Just interesting. Uh, specifically prohibited. This was we're not necessarily noted in all six of the no's or all, all three of the, uh, I'm sorry, and all, all five of the yeses rather, uh, do you have a list of prohibited? But they, you know, they all kind of make sense. No auto repair, carpentry, I mean, th dental office. I'm not sure why dental office was singled out, but mainly because it mandates several employees in order to, to run it, I would think. Medical waste. Dance instruction, you probably don't do one-on-one -on -one dance instruction, so again, reducing the number, the amount of traffic into an area. Uh, the painting of vehicles, upholstering, tattoo parlor, mortuary or balming. I'm not sure who would do that as a home occupation. Other, other you know, that one's just creepy. <laughs> Hannibal Lecter, maybe. Um, uh, next page, veterinary, kennels. Uh, and that's that one's kind of interesting because 
you can, you know, in our large lot, our agricultural areas, you can have a certain amount of uh, kennel usage in those areas. So that one was kind of a toss up. Welding, plumbing. The interesting ones though um, is, let's see, where was it? I thought I had it in there. Um, I'm not seeing it on my list now, uh, but um, some of them did not allow um, uh, beauty salons or barbershops. Right. Um, very specifically were listed as prohibited. I don't know why I missed my list. Oh, there it is. The spacing's off. Radio, television repair, barbershop, and beauty salons. And then actually beauty salon is the use in town here that kind of partially triggered this discussion. Um, but uh, there, I, and checking into it, it was because of the types of chemicals, primarily in a beauty salon, uh, doing perms, uh, ammonia-based products, things of that nature. You're going to have to store a certain amount of it in order to conduct business. So, And then the logical ones, firearms manufacturing, although my guess is, is that still goes on. We just don't hear about it uh, because you can buy parts for all kinds of things right now and assemble them yourself at home. Uh, medical marijuana dispensaries, and those are handled in a separate code that we have. Um, and then just any commercial use not customarily associated with home occupation. In other words, you can't uh, run a mini mart out of your garage. So those were the basic things we gleaned from inventorying those particular communities. And, you know, if we want to do a little general discussion tonight, uh, I'd like to focus more on um, Bringing employees, you know, or, or was something we'd want to consider allowing one extra employee uh, beyond the family members and um, things of that nature. Uh, signage, if we want to stay away from it, or would we want to do something like they do in AJ and allow something small? Um, and I'm, can, I can do this by consensus because I'm watching heads nod or shake. Um, uh, same thing with the size of the use. You know, we have no criteria on how much of a dwelling unit can be used. While we'd had, you know, four of the communities limited it to 25% of the dwelling. And I know for a fact that that's fairly universal. Other communities that I've dealt with in the past, 25% was typically the limit or one room. That was the other thing that I've seen in done, you know, like a bedroom or uh, I know of one where they did a bookkeeping service and they just took up their family room and that's where they held it and all the rest of the house functioned as a normal living unit. So they probably used uh, close to 25% of the home. So, you know, is that a limitation we wanna look at? Uh, the same thing with clients, or, you know, are we gonna be allowing any number of clients during the course of a day? Do we wanna put a limitation on it? Do we wanna look at hours of operation? Those are the things I'd like to kind of hear from the group, uh, just general input at this point. All right, I'll open it up to the commission. Well, oh, signage. I, Mr. Chairman, I'd say signage should not be uh, included in, I mean, that would be the one thing that I would um, prohibit, signage. All right. There's only one person who's mandated by law to make people aware of his occupation at his home residence, and that's a real estate broker. Oh, that's true. Okay. And uh, so well, that can be done I, with an eight by 10 window sign that has the R on it. No, I mean, it's usually very discreet, but it's just something that anyone entering a real estate broker's home needs to know. He's a real estate broker. Right. And I have no idea why, but there it is. A uh, comment I'd like to make is uh, on the employee side. Um, I can see two scenarios, and I know one very, very successful company that started out in a garage, that would be Air Products, and they're, they're worldwide now. Um, but I kind of look at a home business as the potential for a um, cottage industry that may expand if it's successful. And the, the leap from, let's say, 400 square feet to a commercial bricks and mortar is a huge leap. And so um, I, you know, I, what, I'm, what I'm also thinking of is someone uh, who is uh, 
ADA and may need help running a business out of his home or her home, um, that kind of a thing. I, I wouldn't want to set these kinds of things down in granite and, um, and really, uh, I'm not even sure that these things are even policed. I'm surprised at the amount of business licenses that um, are submitted to the town annually that are businesses that nobody would even know was going on. So the honesty there is, uh, well, it's nice to hear. So anyway, that, that's my feelings on it. As far as what's prohibited, uh, pretty much makes sense what's on those lists, unless there's something in a gray area that we get asked about often and end up turning away simply because we don't list it as something you can do as a home occupation. Hmm. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, I'll chime in, I guess. Please, Mr. Um, Frost. Mr. Chairman, Larry, I, I believe we should do a certain amount of limitation. I think if the, if the standard is 25% and then something else that goes along with that, I think that's, that's appropriate. I'd hate to have someone buy a home and make it a business and use one bedroom there and just and consider it a home. The, the other one I think we need to be careful of just to just number eight, where it says, does a, does you allow exchange of commodities on premises? You almost think you need to allow something just because of the example you gave the good old Avon distributor type of a thing. So they've, they've got to have some sort of product on premises. Although I, I don't that's, I don't know how we limit it, but I somehow think we need to. Um, I, I agree with, I think, a comment that was made that if someone needs someone else to work there, I think that's fine. Just We just need to limit it to, to one or so because that will influence parking and other things. Um, I also, um, I, I like the number on the daycare, the daycare prohibition, no more than five. I think that's fairly common in other places that I've seen as well. Commissioner Frost, I actually just looked that up. That's the uh, the one to five ratio is the Arizona state limitation. Right, it's a licensing limitation. You know. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I I was curious on the the barbershop and beauty salons because I know those have to be licensed by the state as well, and they have to be in a separate door to go in there from your house. You can't get into them from your house. So that's so that, that kind of presents a whole new different look because they would definitely have to alter the building to have a, a beauty salon or barbershop there. Correct. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Well, just a, a point of clarification. Uh, um, as far as the number of business licenses the town does issue, it is a huge number. It seems like a huge number. Keep in mind that it's also it pertains to anybody who does business within the town, no matter where their point of business origin is. So a lot of our business licenses are issued to you know, people or contractors um, that are gonna be in other communities. So it's not so much that all those businesses are housed or you know, home bases in Florence, but they are doing business in Florence in some manner. Interesting, I didn't know that. Uh, Mr. Chair. Whoever's got their, whoever's trying to talk, please talk. That would be me. Uh, just, I. I agree with limiting the number of employees, and I think one is a reasonable amount. However, I think I, I'm going to disagree with Mr. Uh, Perot uh, on the signage. We have two businesses here in town because of the nature of their business uh, operated out of their out of their homes, and they're pretty much a 24-7, 365, and that's the two Bells Bonds uh, that we have, and they, have, they need signage to... Uh, the people who come in from out of town because of the county jail uh, to advertise there I think we, and, but I think we have to limit the size and I and I could uh, go along with the four by four uh, limit on the side. Well would our sign code cover this? Um, no I think we would want to do it specifically to the home occupation um, but I'm trying to I have to check on these, but I thought that the, uh, yeah, bail bondsman is actually working out of a business zone. 
So it's already can have signage. It's, it, you know, it's not considered a home occupation. Uh, yeah. The one on Butte anyway. I'm not sure where the other one's at, Commissioner. The one uh, the, uh, out on the highway. Uh, I think it's Durand. Yeah, I'd have to track it down, but it would appear like they're actually working out of a business zone. So that would be not a pro, not you know relevant to the home occupation part, even though it was or is a home also, but it is in a business zone. See, my my feeling is that uh, you know, and nothing is absolute, of course, but uh, you know, it it, uh, it shouldn't be obvious to the residents that it's a commercial area. I mean, people. You know, buy a buy a home in a residential area for the purpose of you know living there, not conducting business. And uh, I, I would just be um, concerned that you know any kind of commercial signage or whatever would kind of detract from what the you know the main purpose of those residents that moved in there you know had in mind. That's all. That's what I'm saying. Uh, of course, there's going to be exceptions, and I'm sure there can be waived. Things can be waived if you do a, you know, there's ways to get around that as well. But anyway, that was my feeling. Well, and in the core area itself, keep in mind that all of Old Town falls under the uh, core area incentive district. And yeah, so, so you have the uh, commission and council has the opportunity to make certain modifications, um, you know, two criteria, two development criteria. Now, whether that would relate, it, it that wouldn't relate to actual uses, but it could relate to signage, you know, for example, if there's a residence that's on Butte um, that is still zoned residential, that they wanted to operate a business, that would be a, a something that the core infill incentive district could cover and they'll to allow signage. Yeah. So you have that built into the town core. Um, may, I, may I say something? Uh, Mr. Anderson? Yeah, the reason uh, that I first mentioned this was uh, based on discussion that I had with the town clerk. And, uh, you know, the town clerk was telling me that there's some of these things that come up that uh, we don't have any regulations on, we don't have any guidelines on. on. Right. And that was the reason that, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with all the stuff that you guys have talked about tonight. I think you're on the, on, on the right road. Uh, I'm not suggesting uh, that you approve any business per se, but just come up with a code that would give some guidelines on what we would allow as you know a business in our in our home. So I want to thank you for your effort here tonight. Yeah, we've actually been lucky in certain areas. Um, for example, the you know the prohibited lists that from these other communities about daycare no more than five, group homes, etc. We get we've gotten a lot of calls in the last six months on where can I have a group home or they give me an address out in Merrill Ranch. Can we have a group home there? And our code currently actually would allow it with a conditional use permit mm. it has to go to commission and council. As soon as they hear there's a process, we never hear from them again. Um, oh, there you go. Business. Group homes are big business. Uh, the same with the uh, the daycare um, and uh, um, uh, type of use, as well as um, foster foster homes. You know that's big business for people, and they make their living that way. And yeah. what it does do, though, it bring it can bring uh, an extraordinary amount of traffic, especially for daycare within a residential area, and it's not scattered throughout the day. You know, like if you're an accountant, you have one client, you go over his taxes and he leaves and you might have another client come an hour later. That's pretty minimal. But when you have um, uh, fun, somebody picking up daycare children in a cluster in the morning and then another cluster in the late afternoon, it becomes uh, an impedance into the community. And especially at the same time, school buses are running through the residential areas, things like that. You end up with a lot of vehicular conflicts. So We've just been lucky that certain types of uses, we have certain amount of control over already in our code that has just kind of scared a few of these prospects away. But, but so, so many of the daycares aren't licensed. They're the, the, the wife of a guy that works at the prison and he tells his buddies that his wife's doing, they're not licensed and they can have, you know, 
multiple and because of the shift work they come and go at different hours you're not always the nine to five or the eight to four that's true and that's why and that, most places prohibit that, daycare of, of more than five five does not require licensing by the state five and less but but a town town license to do it not required then um well that and that's the thing is we don't necessarily know about it yeah that's, what, that's the smaller well, ones maybe. they operate without our knowledge right mr chairman i just wanted to say thanks to uh, larry and Maricela for rounding up all of this information so we're not starting from ground zero this is real helpful to see how other communities are tackling this thank you very much well yeah. what i'd like to do uh, and if you have more comments that that's great but what i'd like to do is just kind of take this general construct the discussion because one of the things that I think we'll need to determine is the best way to insert it in the code. Should we take the definition of home occupation and expand it so that it includes criteria um, or do we need to generate a whole new section of the code? My preference is not to create new sections of the code because that just seems to complicate things. Um, but I'd like to take a look at the home occupation definition and see if we can massage it to start to include or exclude certain things based on this discussion. Okay. okay. Is there any more discussion? Boy, I'm glad I'm not writing the minutes on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'll close this discussion and we'll move, move forward for information only. Uh, who's ever on the hot seat, the general plan update. General plan update. Um, we are real close to posting on our website, um, the survey. Uh, it's a real simple, uh, I think it's 10 questions uh, to start gathering input and just ideas and thoughts from the community. Uh, that, that hopefully, actually, I'm just kind of waiting for the final edit of it to come to us. So if we get it in the next couple of days, it'll probably be posted by the end of next week. So that's coming up very shortly. The same thing with the redevelopment plan we've received the draft uh, staff has reviewed it, that we've made a number of changes and comments. Uh, we should get a, a more uh, finished product, maybe as early as tomorrow. And we will get that posted also and links, what it is, it'll be a link that you click on and it'll take you through a, a very interactive website. Um, there'll be, I think we're probably the first community in the state that this consultant has um, used this website um, model on. And so if you wish to navigate it, please do. Also though, on the title page, there'll be a, a, another click on that'll take you directly to the PDF document. You've seen a first draft of that. We'll be sending you a more updated draft from the one you've already seen. Uh, uh, Larry, let me, let me interrupt here. Yeah. Uh, I, I really wanna understand how this process is working. It sounds like we're not going to have a discussion like we're having tonight. It sounds like it's an interactive thing um, with the consultant. No, you will, you will most definitely have a specific discussion on this. But we want All to right. start soliciting the, you know, like a final list of input, thoughts, things like that that we would bring to you as part of your, of your discussion and uh, action. So you're going to be in directly involved with the adoption of this. That still has to happen. At All right, but point what, what I'm getting at is this interactive thing. Is that where we should be sending our comments? Not necessarily. You can send them directly to staff. As, a, as one of our commissions coming to us is just as easy. Uh, so right if, now, I, if I write up an email, yes. send that to you with my comments and if you deem them worthy looking at or sending them on to the consultant, um, that would be the way to, to, to work with this thing? That would be, uh, yes, that would be very acceptable. Um, Cause one of the things that we've cleaned up since the draft you've already received is there were grammatical errors, punctuation errors, things like that. We've, we've caught a lot of those and cleaned them up. There was, if you looked at the PDF version rather than the interactive, there was a lot of white space We've cleaned up a lot of that. 
And, but the interactive one is just the way it all works, I think is um, kind of nifty. It's just kind of fun to go through the way you can scroll through the various chapters. You can do it laterally and vertically in there. But yes, if you want to send us any comments that you have via email, that would be great. We will package those and they will all go to the consultant at the same time. And then uh, we'll be scheduling. Um, uh, I haven't set the dates yet because we're coming into the holiday season and everything kind of gets squirrely on as far as scheduling meetings. But it's going to be in the relatively new fu uh, near future that we will schedule a um, presentation, discussion, et cetera, with the planning commission. I'd like to get through this while you're still on board. No offense, Ms. B Ms. Benitez, but the snow on his roof is very valuable. <laughs> and there's, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I can't commit to it, but we are having discussions about me uh, staying on as a consultant for a limited number of hours to work on and finish up this project and the general plan. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Please, Mr. Frost. Um, Larry, what's your timeline for getting comments from us? We'll establish when, well, uh, when we post it online, uh, we're going to give about 30 days because we'll be doing advertising on social media, et cetera. So I would say at this point, December 1. Okay. Tomorrow's okay, though. Tomorrow's fine. I think we can deal with that. Okay. It'll give the rest of you something to do between football games over Thanksgiving weekend. Can't wait. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? Any, anything more on redevelopment? Not at this point. Okay. And our future agenda. Future agenda, your next meeting in two weeks, you'll have a conditional use permit for a church on Butte um, in uh, X Lines old buildings where that secondhand store was for a while. Um, it's an established site. It's an established parking. Um, it's, it's that area of town that has four different zoning classifications on it. Um, for whatever bizarre reason, I have no idea whoever came up with that should never be in this business. Um, the, uh, the, one of these classifications is neighborhood office. Neighborhood office would allow a church um, with a conditional use permit. So that's coming in front of you. And accompanying that will be a core area incentive district request to re for the reduction in the required parking. Uh, there's sound rationale to do that because of the way it's set up. Uh, they will have non-overlapping uses within the building that so that their actual day-to-day -day parking requirement is not nearly as great as the um, uh, assembly of all of it. And plus there's, you know, that's in it for certain areas of Old Town where there's on-street parking and they happen to be very close to the county complex, which would provide extra parking also. Uh, so anyway, that'll be coming in front of you um, at your next meeting. And I'm trying to think where we're waiting for a submittal from Superstar Car Wash. Oh, big O Tires. I'm sorry? Big O Tires. Big O Tire, two of them. Uh, both wow. going in in the Safeway Plaza out at uh, Merrill Ranch. Um, they have both had um, uh, their pre-application meetings and we're just waiting for design review submittals from them at this point. Also coming up, probably not until January, the American Leadership Academy out at the southwest corner of, of, of uh, Hunt Highway and Franklin Road is actually purchased a large tract of land uh, further west on Franklin Road and is going to put in a high school and athletic fields. And oh. we've already have the, we're, we're setting them up for pre-app later this month or the 1st of December. What was it? 2nd of December. And, and or end of November, the 25th. Um, the building that they're submitting is spectacular. I can't word it any other way. You know, you would you would hope that you know everything we got was as nice as what they're proposing on this. So that'll be coming through on design review probably around the first of the year. Um, any others, Marcella, that you can think of? We will have some preliminary plats for new units in Anthem. Right. I mean, maybe towards the end of this year or next year. Okay. Or next year. 
Yeah, um, these are plats that actually back up to Franklin Road on the east side of Hunt Highway, uh, up uh, on the, the east side of the hospital. Okay. So development is occurring. Yeah, great. Great. Is that Thank it you. for future agenda items? Yeah. That kind of covers it. Good. Then moving on, we'll do a call to the public. Is there any public? There is no public uh, attachment. Okay. Well, nobody I'm, raised. I'm, nobody I'm raised. Public. Ah, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> oh, I've already interrupted you enough, enough tonight. <laughs> so I'll too. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. Um, Mr. Anderson, do you have comments? Uh, well, no, I uh, I gave you my comments. I appreciate uh, all the work that you've done on this uh, uh, home business uh, because that's uh, something that we need to get uh, uh, taken care of you know, and and start some kind of code on it. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but at least we can start it so we can give you know the town clerk some some guidance when people come in and say, "Hey, I want to do this in my home," or it, or I, you know. I got a neighbor who's doing body law in his house. Is that allowed? You know, that's that seems to be one of the biggest problems that uh, that we have. Somebody coming and reporting with something the neighbor's doing. They're working on their cars or their servicing cars and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, just giving uh, the town some guidance and some codes uh, as to what's allowed and what's not allowed would uh, make their life a little bit easier. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, with that, I will close the call to the public. Call to the commission, current events and only. Anybody? What a lively group. All right. Uh, with that, I'll close the call to the commission and ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion to adjourn. Uh, was that Mr. Schmidt? Yes. yes. Okay, and second? I'll second. Mr. Simmons, uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Schmidt, second by Commissioner Simmons. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? We are adjourned. Aye.